This is the Project Management Podcast. We bring project management to beginners and experts. Find us on the web at pm-podcast.com or send your emails to info at pm-podcast.com. Hello and welcome to episode number 157. I am Cornelius Fichtner. This is the Project Management Podcast. Nice to have you with us. Steve Kay has been a guest on our show before, and you may know and recognize him as one of the great experts in the soft skills area, especially when it comes to meeting management and delivering presentations. Steve and I recorded today's interview right after we had finished recording a webinar for our sister podcast, the PDU Podcast. That was the second webinar that Steve did for us over there, so we wanted to give you a few tips and tricks from those two webinars in regards to meeting management and effective presentations via the interview today. We will look at why these soft skills are important for your career. Steve will give you his top three tips for improving both skills and will close with his recommendations for what you can do tomorrow to have a better meeting and to improve your presentations. Today's episode of the Project Management Podcast is sponsored by the Project Management Congress 2010 in Munich, better known as the PM Summit 2010. It takes place on November 15th, 2010 and offers five presentation tracks with over 35 presentations on topics like agile versus classic project management, soft skills, as well as requirements, team leadership and knowledge management. The keynote speaker is no other than Peter Taylor, whom you heard in our last episode. For more information, please go to pm-summit.de. That's pm-summit.de. Before we get to our interview, I need to announce two winning names. In the past three episodes, I announced that we are giving away two licenses to projectmanager.com. One license, as always, goes to our premium listeners and one goes to our free listeners. And the winners are Sandra Koppelman from Pennsylvania. She's the premium podcast subscriber who wins this particular license. And Oke Abiodun, who listens to our free podcast. And he left the very creative comment on our Facebook Uh, which is simply called Mine, 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 Mine. That's what he said. His name was randomly picked from among everyone who left a comment on our giveaway post there. So congratulations to Sandra and Oke. On to today's interview with Steve K, who says about himself, I am a results specialist. My highest priority is to help you become more successful. In his workshops, he covers soft skills for meetings, relationships, presentations, behavior styles, and time management. When you work with Steve, you get more than a facilitator or a speaker or a trainer. You get all of the above, and in turn, you get the results that help you become more successful. And now, without further ado, think about a dreaded upcoming meeting or a really, really bad presentation that needed some help, and enjoy the interview. The Project Management Podcasts Feature Interview Today with Steve Kay, Leadership Expert Hello Steve and welcome back to the Project Management Podcast Hello We have just concluded the recording of a PDU podcast webinar titled Effective Presentations for Project Managers. And about a year ago or so, you or I uh, and I, we were here in the same room and we recorded effective meetings for project managers. And today we want to talk about both. We want to talk about meeting management and presentation skills. But before we get into that, let me ask you a general question, because meeting management and presentation skills, well, those are soft skills. Those aren't the skills that you can learn by, I don't know, sitting at a computer and learning the features of a new software. Do you find that soft skills are more difficult to learn? And and, and why do you think so? 
That's an intriguing question. I think it depends upon the person and it also depends upon commitment. If someone discounts soft skills, uh, then they will ignore it. Uh, people who value soft skills will make it a priority to learn them. Now, some of this also depends upon personality or behavior preferences. Uh, some people prefer things and results and activity, whereas other people prefer people and connection and conversation and relationships. Uh, people who prefer the people side of things will gravitate toward emphasizing and learning soft skills. And, and so they'll be more effective at them. The people who value the other side, the results and the things, uh, may discount soft skills because other things are more important. However, the people who like things could help themselves significantly by learning soft skills because now they provide a full compartment, a full kit, if you will, that maximizes their effectiveness as a person and as a leader. People always say that soft skills are difficult to learn. Do you have, uh, have you found any effective way to add soft skills to your arsenal? There are many resources that somebody can use to learn soft skills. I think one very effective way, at least at the start, is to attend a workshop. And, and I'd stress workshop rather than seminar. In a seminar, somebody comes and just talks. In a workshop, you're put in situations or you work on small projects that cause you to experience successful application of the soft skills. And so now you're able to learn and practice, which makes all of it much more relevant and real. So I would recommend starting with a workshop. It it's, can take a half a day or a day of time. And from that, you would obtain a wonderful overview of soft skills in some particular area. Uh, then after that, I would encourage reading, uh, attending other workshops, paying attention to how other people work their soft skills. And by blending all of this together, the person can constantly improve their effectiveness. And I'll share with you that uh, on one hand, I've considered my use of soft skills to be fairly good. And at the same time, this is an ongoing learning priority for me. I am always reading books, attending conferences, attending seminars, attending workshops, going through constant learning so that I can improve upon these soft skills that I'm already fairly good at. And the reason is there's always more to learn. Makes sense. Yes, there's always more to learn. Yes, I mean, it, it's almost like in technology. Technology is a moving entity. And so rather than just say, okay, I'm done. I learned how to program computers back when there were punch cards. I'm finished. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's ancient technology. Yeah, people easily understand that comparison, right? Okay. And because you've learned 25 years ago how to deal with people, you don't have to learn that anymore because it's still the same, isn't it? People are the same. Uh -huh. The issues are the same. And yet the... The depth of what you can learn or the sophistication that you can reach continues to move. So much greater than yes. the features of some kind of a piece of software. That's right. All right. Um, you mentioned workshops. Let's move on to webinars because uh, of the two webinars that you and I recorded. The idea here is that we go and we pick we pick the golden nuggets out of those two uh, PDU podcast webinars. Uh, I'll ask you the same three questions regarding both of these webinars, and we'll start with effective meetings. And before For, you do yes. that, let me jump in. Okay. The webinars have high value, and the reason is because of the way you've designed this, you have provided people a quick, easy, and digestible means of obtaining valuable content. I'll share with you that I took the content from an eight-hour workshop, in both cases, a workshop on business meetings, an eight-hour workshop on business presentations, and I picked the very best, most valuable ideas and combined that into the program that is now in your podcast. So if somebody listens to this and finds a way to use even a small collection of what we talked about, they will improve their effectiveness in these soft skills areas. All right. And now let's move into the nuggets here. Okay. So um, same three questions for both webinars. The first one is effective meetings for project managers. So question number one, <laughs> why are effective meetings even important for a project manager? 
Effective meetings are important for a project manager because a meeting in itself is a project. And by the conduct of that meeting, the project manager demonstrates proficiency in project management. Everything that's necessary for an effective meeting is found in effective project management. From setting a goal, to working through people, to managing process, to doing something with processing the results, it's all project management. In addition, there have been studies where it is shown that in a high level of cases, something like 89%, 90% of cases, senior executives will use a person's ability to lead a meeting as one of the criteria when they make decisions on promotions in the leadership positions. And so being able to hold an effective meeting is critically important for somebody's career success. Uh, in addition, the results of a meeting directly affect a business, the future of a business. These meetings produce solutions, they produce plans, they produce strategies, they produce agreements and decisions. Without those results, the business has no future. <laughs> That's right. So holding effective meetings is one of the most important skills that people can learn how to do. And they need to make sure that they learn how to use the best practice so that they use their time as effectively as possible to hold the best possible meeting. What? are your top three tips for our listeners regarding holding effective meetings? Three top tips. First of all, recognize that a meeting is like a project. And so we begin by knowing the goal for the meeting. Absolutely, you must know the goal. In fact, you must know the goal so well that you write it out. Second, you design an agenda that helps you accomplish that goal. <laughs> And it's a real agenda that identifies how you're going to use time to obtain that result. And an agenda is going to be more than just a list of words. It's going to be more than just asking people what they want to talk about. It's a specific plan to accomplish the goal. And then the third thing is checking with the people who come to the meeting so that you can determine whether or not they're prepared, whether they understand the goal, and even if they're planning to attend. And I guess you're also checking with them to make sure that what you have put into your agenda, what you think the goal is, is indeed matching what they expect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, these are information interviews, if you will. They're polite. Uh, they sound like, hi, I sent you an agenda last week. I wonder if you have any comments or any questions about it. And then you, they, they may say no. And I say, well, we're planning to work on this. This is our goal. Um, what are your expectations there? and anything else that might follow as being appropriate to help you design the meeting and also move everything so that it's positioned toward a successful result. All right. Question number three. Let's assume we have a project manager. They have a meeting scheduled tomorrow, right? And what can they do now immediately as they go back into their office in order to improve the quality, the success of that meeting that's happening tomorrow. Okay. It's late in the game, right? Yes, it's late. We're, we're in the fourth quarter, if you yeah. will, or the last minutes of the game. What can you do to save things? I would recommend the following. First of all, stop and identify the goal for the meeting. Why are you doing this? What do you want to have when you finish? What results do you want? And you must know this. Now, for most people, this involves a minute or two. You simply write out your goal for the meeting. If you don't know what it is, this is an important clue. And if that's the case, and if you can't think of a goal, I would encourage you to cancel the meeting. Because what you're doing instead now is convening a time when other people will sit in the room and do nothing. Uh, if you just want to talk to people, join them for lunch. <laughs> so the first thing, you know, I mean, rather than gather people together so you can waste their time. Uh, I've conducted surveys that have shown that businesses waste an average of 20% of their professional payroll time on bad meetings. Didn't you once have a, a, a presentation that had, was something like, help, I'm stuck in a meeting and they ran out of donuts? Yes. <laughs> that was you, yes. Yes, it's a gag <laughs> title, uh, as if donuts are the carrying reason for holding a meeting. Uh, and in fact, I recommend not serving food because if people are eating, they're thinking about the food rather than the work. And when people are in one of my meetings, they are working hard. All right. Okay. So that's one. Write out the goal. Second, plan an agenda. Now, I realize this may take a little bit more time. And it may even be too late because the meeting is tomorrow. 
hour, but at least you can, when you start it, you now have an agenda and you can present it at the beginning. Okay. What you could do is if you have the goal and there's no time to prepare an agenda, by the way, I, I would cancel the meeting. I, I would not hold a meeting. This, this is like showing up without clothes because you didn't have time to get dressed. It, it's that bad. So I would refuse to call a meeting without a goal and without an agenda. I would just plain cancel it. However, if you find that you're in a meeting and you at least know the goal, well, let's even go deeper. Suppose you don't even know the goal and you discover that you're in a meeting. I would ask the people, what result do you want to have at the end of this meeting? And I'd collect the list of answers, and then I'd point to them one by one and say, okay, uh, pick two out of this list, and when I point to it, raise your hand, and the one that gets the most hands will be the goal for the meeting. And then I would ask the people, okay, now that we're going to work on this goal, how can we do that? And I'd invent an agenda on the spot. But recognize this is pathetic. Right. This is a, an open public admission of really planning failure, and I doubt any real project manager would want to expose him or herself to that situation. <laughs> uh, you can hear my energy on yes, this. Yes, yes. Uh, this is like asking people and you, to also waste you're their time. And you're very animated, and, yes. and I can see the passion yes, so, right there. Well, because I, I'm a... I'm a I'm a results specialist. I like you know, I like results, and the thought of wasting people's time is terrible. It's expensive and it's destructive to the business. Yeah. So if you have that kind of a meeting, at least make sure there are enough donuts, right? Um, you may as well <laughs> feed people, I suppose, but then leave. You know, go do some other work. The key things: have a goal, have an agenda, and then if you have any time at all, call a few key people, main decision makers, major stakeholders and ask them a few questions about the meeting. And they may even be able to help you identify a goal or prepare an agenda. Uh, another possibility, if you have an assistant or a member of your team, ask them to prepare the agenda. And now you can use this as a measure of their effectiveness as a leader. Right. Okay. So those were the three questions that I had for you for the Effective Meetings for Project Managers webinar. We're now going back to question one, but for the second webinar which is effective presentations for project managers. So, question number one. Why are effective presentation skills important for a project manager? Effective presentation skills are important because now you are demonstrating your leadership, your ability to think, your ability to communicate in public. So rather than doing this in private, or maybe before one or two people, as you might conversationally, now you're doing this in a room with an audience. And typically, these audiences include people who are more senior to you, who are decision makers, and they will use your conduct during your presentation as evidence when they plan who to promote or give a raise to. So it can have a significant influence on how your career advances through the business. In addition, your presentation is an opportunity to obtain some result. And if you ruin the presentation, you squander the opportunity. So on that point, knowing how to give effective presentations is very, very important. I once gave a presentation at a conference, and afterwards, a vice president came up to me. And he said early in his career, he recognized that the most effective leaders in the business were the people who spoke well when they gave presentations. And so he said he joined Toastmasters and he invested the effort and time to become an effective speaker. And he said, you know, this is probably why I've been promoted early consistently through my career and why I'm a vice president today at this young an age. Right. And I can say that without Toastmasters, this podcast that the listeners are currently listening to would probably not exist. Okay. Because and it was also a jumping board or springboard for my, for my presentations and, and the way I do these podcasts. And I'll join you on that. Without Toastmasters, I would not be a professional speaker. I was a member of Toastmasters for almost 15 years. I have given hundreds of Toastmaster presentations. I've entered contests. I've won contests. Uh, I could go through the whole Toastmaster credentials that I've collected. It's a long list. And that gave a, provided a foundation in confidence and mechanics so that, that when I became a professional speaker, I could do a credible job. Mm -hmm. I think we've seamlessly moved into the second question here. What are your top three tips to our listeners regarding 
effective presentation skills for project managers? Obviously, join Toastmasters is one. Uh, Toastmasters is one tip, and that's a long-range tip because it will take some time. Uh, If you join Toastmasters, work the program rather than just show up at meetings and enjoy the conversation. So become involved and work the program. On a more short-term basis, if you're scheduled to give a presentation, you know, like tomorrow, uh, find out the goal for the talk. Find out why they asked you to talk. Ask the person who scheduled you, why am I giving this talk? Uh, If they don't know, take your best guess. Uh, it's important to have a goal because the goal is an endpoint and the endpoint leads to results. Then, to the extent that's possible, plan a presentation, uh, even if you have to begin talking about it conversationally with friends and colleagues and even family between now and when you speak, because by doing that, you'll become fluent in your key ideas. And then I'll add, to the extent that the time allows, check in with some of the people who will be in your audience to ask them what do they want? How can this presentation serve them? What are they expecting? Because if you can answer those questions through your talk, you'll be more effective. Right. And I think the top three tips that you've given us, they're very closely related to the situation of the third question, what a project manager can do today if he or she has a presentation going down tomorrow in regards to, ah, oh, how, can I, how yes. can I make it a success, right? If, if you suddenly realize, oh my goodness, I'm scheduled to give a talk tomorrow, what do I do? Uh, the first thing I do is settle your mind uh, because peace of mind is important. And so rather than imagine failure, I'd imagine success. And then I do everything I could to make sure that that success became a reality. And that includes knowing the goal for the talk so that you can speak to that goal and then doing whatever preparation you can manage within the time allowed or that's available. And that might mean drafting out a quick outline, making a list of key points that you plan to cover, and then practicing some key points or some key delivery conversationally with friends or even with yourself while you're driving home, while you're in the shower, while you're washing dishes, taking chores, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you know, if you have children, tell, tell part of your speech as a bedtime story. I mean, be creative. There has to be some way that you can practice talking through this. Okay? And then I'll add a fourth. Uh, call some of the people in the audience, ask them what they expect and how you can be of service. Excellent. Steve, thank you very much. Those were our two times three questions, three times the same questions, uh, or the same three questions for your effective meetings for project managers, webinar, and your effective presentations for project managers. Thank you very much for recording these webinars with me on the PDU podcast and stopping by here today and giving us the golden nuggets from those presentations here on the Project Management Podcast. Thank you. You know, Cornelius, it is a pleasure working with you because you manage this like the optimum project. (laughs) You are the epitome of a project manager in your approach and your diligence. And that's why these are as effective as they are. Right. Thank you. And I can honestly say that every time I do this with you, there is one area of project management I never have to do. And that's risk management. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, thank you very much. And uh, I'm absolutely certain we'll talk again here on the podcast. Thank you. And that was our interview with Steve Kay and his tips on effective meetings and effective presentations. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. As always, you can find us on the web at pm-podcast.com. If you are a PMP or a PGMP and you're looking for a simple and effective way to earn your PDUs, like 20 of them on your iPod, then try our sister podcast, the PDU Podcast. Get new webinars and at least one new PDU every month on autopilot. Stop by at pducast.com. That's P-D-U-C-A-S-T.com. Please send your emails to info at pm-podcast.com. And when you write, first of all, put the dash in there. And second, please tell me where in the world you are writing from. And finally, we have this. Meetings are events in which minutes are kept and hours are lost. Until next time.